The opening action scene with Falcon is incredible. I think the military might be contacting you to get that uh, equipment for themselves. Excellent. <laughs> how and was I will filming- share. <laughs> <laughs> how was filming it? Was that how much was practical and how much was a green screen? Oh, a lot was practical. We um, I did a lot of studying of, um, you know, extreme sports and people that jump out of planes and the, with the squirrel suits and the, and the parachuting and the, all the various um, you know places that they put the camera. Because the goal, my goal, of course, you know, like any filmmaker, I'm going to do the best Falcon, you know, flight sequences ever. I'm going to reinvent it. Well, thank you for that. Um, so I did my best to uh, to really, you know, uh, use what's really current because, you know, every year uh, the, the equipment that's available for filming is, is you know, uniquely different. So um, and smaller and more compact. And so, um, you know, I looked at a lot of uh, the teams and what they could do. And um, so I, you know, slapped cameras all over people and, uh, and so that we could really feel like we were flying with, with Falk. And that was the, the, the notion was that we were right there with them. And, um, and sure enough, our team, you know, we jumped out of planes and, uh, and they, they, what you see them doing. Well, stunt people jumping out of planes, right? Anthony Mackie wasn't, you know, that's too risky for him, right? <laughs> because it I, looked like it was him. It is him. Oh, yeah. Is it? He is, he is, listen, he does a lot of his stunts. Um, uh, I can't go into all the details because yeah. um, it'd be spoiling, but I have to say he is amazing. And wow. so yes, both he and Sebastian are uh, full on. They practice very hard. Uh, they work with the, a stunt team for months uh, to get it all right, to get the choreography right. And so, um, you know, there, obviously there's also rig work, but no, we, we, they do a lot of their own stunts. Well, speaking of them, they're also both very funny guys. Oh, and yeah. we've, we've seen some clips already released of their banter. How much is written and how much do they improvise on set? Well, you know, I can't give you percentages only because uh, it feels oh, yeah. like, well, no, just because it, <laughs> yeah. it, it sort of is organic how it happens. Mm-hmm. But I can say they are super collaborative and really they bring so much to the, um, <laughs> not just to the enjoyment of the day, frankly, because um, there's that, you know, production is really strenuous. And so we can be standing out in the rain or the dark or the night or the, you know, the cold or the whatever heat, uh, uh, because I think we went through all the different, um, uh, you know, seasons um, and they come on set with their good humor and um, they lift everybody's spirits all the time. They have stories and they have, you know, they bring a smile um, and with each other because they have so much history um, you know, they, they are friends off screen. And we did a lot of looking before we knew them, before Malcolm and I, before we knew who they, you know, just we hadn't worked with them yet. Uh, we looked at a lot of their interviews to see their chemistry. So oh, Malcolm was, yeah, and Malcolm was able to really write into that. And um, so they had a lot of license to, to ad lib, um, you know, and like anything, uh, some of it works and some of it doesn't. But um, uh, no matter what, we managed to capture it, like I look at a script as being kind of a really solid roadmap, but it isn't necessarily the actual, des- you know, the, the, it, we, we, we use it, we rely on it because obviously it's been very thoughtfully um, uh, constructed. But within that, um, it's also uh, sort of a Pandora's box of opportunity. And, uh, and they are great at taking that opportunity. Well, speaking of scripts and Pandora's boxes, when it comes to Marvel, fans are just so hungry for Easter eggs and connections oh, yeah. to the larger story. Now, obviously, you can't give any spoilers, but can they look forward to those kind of elements in this show? Of course. <laughs> there, I like the succinctness of that. I mean, there's a, lot, there's a lot there that you can't talk about. I love it. Of course not. <laughs> uh, also, you know, it's been reported recently that more that less people than ever are interested in joining the military. Uh, I love how you spotlight the military and the men and women in service. I've only seen the first episode, but right off the bat, I think it's very, it's really wonderful. How do you hope audiences view the military watching Falcon and Winter Soldier? Well, you know, uh, we really hugely respect what they do, Uh, you know, what, where they, they, I mean, it's very important that we, as the MCU, I guess, but, you know, me personally, uh, understand the trials and tribulations um, of what we can't possibly know. And I think, uh, you know, walking in the shoes of, it's very easy from the outside to have whatever opinion you're going to have 
But unless you've walked in those shoes, how could you possibly know what they face, um, whether they're overseas or, or coming back? And I think it, um, Bucky does a great job of really embracing the, the very intricate um, uh, conundrums and, and issues that come with, a, you know, some troubled past. So you, he's done things, you know, that he, um, in his past, he's done things that he was not in control of. He was, um, you know, brainwashed. Mm-hmm. And so much like um, the soldiers who come back and have to, uh, you know, process what they've just been through, he has to process what he's just been through. And I hope we've, um, I hope we've served that to the best we possibly could. So. Well, I think you handled the PTSD, uh, PTSD discussions in the first episode really, really wonderfully. Uh, and both Bucky and Sam are dealing with a lot of issues that are real. And, you know, I don't think we've ever seen Marvel address real world issues like this. How did you and Malcolm kind of coax them into being, you know, so timely and being like, let's go for it? Well, we didn't have to coax. I mean, that was from the beginning, Um, from the very beginning. uh, I walked in the room and said, I think this is the most important story of the century. So um, right there, and and we were all in. Uh, So Marvel never shies from having these really difficult conversations. Uh, What they're brilliant at is sitting them within a very easy, uh, easy way to have them because we use humor and we use um, you know, uh, action, and we use all the things that are that are part of the conversation, but they they help us, you know, process so that it is it isn't full on, you know, um, it is it's a little easier to take. Well, but the, the in, Disney it, saying a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Well, exactly, and I, I think also um, the real world of it. If if um, Endgame was a fantastic otherworldly spectacle, this is the opposite because um, post blip world. There's just so, and which of course is, is so relevant now with the, the pandemic of it, which yes. we could possibly predicted. Um, but we wanted to face, our, have our characters, because we get to spend so much more time with them and get to know them. Um, we really wanted to, to take them into real world, uh, relatable, um, you know, uh, issues and family and, um, you know, PTSD and all the stuff that really goes with existence and yeah. see what that looks like. And, um, uh, so, yes, it's going to be, I think, a fun ride for the the fans who have not seen this side of the MCU before. Oh, it's just phenomenal. And, you know, finally, what I want to ask you, uh, congratulations on your success, by the way. As as, a, as a woman, it's so great to see you doing this show and Thank nailing you. it and doing just such a phenomenal job. And women, more women than ever, are getting big directing gigs like this. They're being nominated for directing and they're winning. But what I, you know, what's bothered me is that people have said that, well, women should only direct women's stories. So I like that you are directing all the episodes and you're also executive producer on an action show with a mostly male cast. So what do you hope Hollywood and audiences, what do you hope, how do you hope they see women directors going forward? Uh, I'd love to say uh, that we should drop the title women directors or male directors. Mm -hmm. We should just have directors. And uh, the day or, you know, the diversity of it, whether it's a black director or an Indian director, uh, just drop all that and make them directors. I couldn't agree more. And con- again, congratulations. It's very I think everything that you said that you wanted to accomplish with this show. I've only seen one episode, but I feel like you're, you're definitely accomplishing it. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, well, let's listen. It'll be for the fans to decide. But what I can tell you is we loved making this show. We all of us. Loved it. So I hope the fans love it as much as we loved making it. 